Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and a few months ago I was at CES in Las Vegas and I saw a really cool home theater keyboard trackpad combo from Lenovo. It was a very compact device. It had physical keys, so if you wanted to type on it, you just push the keys down. But those keys were capacitive, so if you wanted to use it as a trackpad, you just had to run your finger over the keys to get a mouse. I thought it was really cool. That product is not yet out, but I got an email from a company called Mirveil the other day asking me to check out their keyboard, which works in a similar way. And this thing is uh, got a keyboard on it, of course, but it also doubles as a trackpad, and it's very compact and, of course, wireless. So I figured, hey, let's check it out. Unfortunately, it's probably going to uh, enter into the realm of didn't make the cut here on the channel, but it's worth looking at anyhow, which we'll explore briefly in this review. Review. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from a company called Mirveil. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now, before we get into the hardware, I do want to give you my usual buy at your own risk warning for these Chinese products. The good news is this thing is only about $20, but I don't know what kind of support you will get from the company if something were to go wrong. So just buy at your own risk and know you might be out 20 bucks at some point if the device doesn't hold up over time. But I was very attracted to its overall design here. I really like the fact that you can get a keyboard and a trackpad in a very small uh, little form factor here. And it's a lot smaller than the big Logitech keyboards I'm using right now with my home theater devices. That was really intriguing to me. Uh, the problem, though, is that this is a capacitive keyboard. So you have to look at it to see which key you're pressing. There's no bumps or anything to guide your fingers around. And that would not be a problem if there were a backlight on this device. But there is no backlight on the device. You'll have to turn on a light or something if you're in a home theater environment in a darkened room to actually see which key you are pressing. So that was strike one against it. It is wireless, of course, but it's not Bluetooth. And strike two is that it does require a little dongle here. And they were unable to tell me whether or not this is an encrypted connection between the dongle and the keyboard. There's been a number of issues in recent months over these uh, generic Chinese keyboards basically transmitting everything over the air without any encryption, which means that passwords and other things could be exposed to those listening. Uh, all they could tell me is that it's a 2.4 gigahertz radio. Well, duh, of course it is. They all are. Uh, but they could not answer the question as to whether or not this was encrypted. So that is another <laughs> strike against it. And the other issue I have with it is that it's not all that smart. You have to tell it what mode to be in versus it understanding what your intentions are. I guess I'm expecting maybe too much from a uh, $20 product here. But as you can see down at the bottom, the little light is on uh, next to the finger icon, which means it's currently in mouse mode. So I can move the uh, pointer around here, no problem. If I want to select some text, I have to push the uh, mouse button down here and then just drag my finger across there to get the text selected. So that's that works like a mouse would. But I can't just start typing on here because it's not currently in keyboard mode. So I have to hit the button here uh, to go to keyboard mode, and then I can start typing on it. It does have a little vibration that goes off every time a key is pressed. So you do get some bit of feedback when you are typing on it, kind of like an Android phone might do in its default configuration. So that was kind of cool. But there was a compromise that they could have made that unfortunately they didn't make here that might have made this a better product. Let me show you what I mean by that. Over here in the lower left-hand corner, there is a gesture icon. And if I hold down that gesture thing there, you can see now the mouse light and the keyboard light are lit up simultaneously. And I thought that maybe uh, this would allow me to use some mouse controls while I was still in the keyboard mode. Even though it's not ideal, I would have been OK with it given the price tag. I think that would be a really easy way to uh, make a compromise here to get a quick mouse cursor without having to go down here and push the button and jump back and forth. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. What this does is it allows you to replicate an arrow key. So I can go to the left or the right here, or I can move the cursor up and down. But I cannot use it as a mouse, unfortunately. Uh, there is a way to hit the Enter key, though. So if I hold down that gesture key and just tap on the keyboard here, you can see I can initiate an Enter. And that works in either mode. But I think it would have been a lot easier for them just to uh, be able to make it a mouse here. And then you can just jump right back to the keyboard when you were done moving your pointer around. That would make a lot more sense to me, but unfortunately, it is not meant to be. It does support in mouse mode here. Let me switch back. It does support some pinch to zoom stuff, but it doesn't seem to work on some of the Mac apps here. It does, though, work in Google Maps. Let me go over to Google Maps here, and I can uh, sort of zoom the map in most of the time here, as you can see. So not the best here. It sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. And uh, I can't really find a rhyme or reason to getting this pinch to zoom thing to work. There we go. So now it's working. So not the best mouse here. It does support two-finger mouse scrolling. So if I go back over to the window here, I can sometimes 
uh, move, <laughs> move everything up and down. As you can see, it's just not very good at being a trackpad. It is not very good at being a keyboard, and you can't even see it in the dark, which is a big problem. Uh, there is some volume controls here on the side, so you do have a physical button for turning the volume up and down on your TV, but uh, that is about the extent of it. So no idea on encryption, no backlight, uh, kind of a lousy mouse experience, and really clumsy to have to keep switching back and forth between modes here. So they probably saw what Lenovo was working on and thought, hey, we could do that for a lot less money. So if they added the backlight, made the mouse work a little better, and uh, maybe gave me some more confidence on its encryption back to its uh, transmitter unit, I'd have more confidence in the product. But all of these things combined really makes this a didn't make the cut device. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.